What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Yobo Tool Cayman. A lot of you uh, might remember that I have reviewed another knife um, in this line, and that was the Yobo Tool or Yobo Knives Aurora. That's Y-O-B-O-T-O-O-L. I'll actually show you the box here if I can find exactly where, there we go. On the back here you can see product name is Cayman and you can see the maker is Yobo Tool Inc. I've been in contact with uh, a representative of their company and they've been uh, they've been really nice. They've been very uh, good about sending uh, their line. They're gonna actually send the other two knives in their product line for review. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much Yobo Tool. I'll try not to let that affect my review as usual. But uh, just so you guys know this knife was um, donated to the channel. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement here overall length of the Cayman coming in at about eight and a half inches. So this knife is actually a little bit bigger than the Aurora, if I remember correctly. Eight and a half inches overall from tip to scale, just under four inches, about 3.9. And you're looking at just a hair under 3.75 on the cutting edge, given that generous cutting, or uh, um, I'm sorry, that generous um, sharpening choil there, you're looking at about 3.6 inches of cutting edge. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. It's actually an excellent si uh, size comparison here um, in terms, not, I mean, like obviously we have a different blade shape and a different handle shape, but in terms of the overall profile and space they take up in the pocket, they're somewhat similar. So if you have a Rat 1 uh, laying around, then uh, that's roughly the size you're looking at here. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall, so just a little bit shorter. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall, so a little bit shorter than the Cayman there. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. How about action? How's the action on this guy? Well, much like the Aurora, uh, the action's very snappy, and um, the uh, flipper tab's interesting. It's just kind of a stub that points up, and at first I was like, that's weird. You know, so is it light switch or is it push button? It actually is, it is push button, but it's at exactly the right angle, and it works really well, and honestly, it's rounded off nicely, and the landing zone down here is good. So in terms of the flipping action, not only is it snappy and, you know, satisfying, you get that click, um, but the flipper tab is also um, kind of, non-protruding and it's a shape that looks a little bit funny and it's a little bit um, unorthodox in terms of a flipper tab but um, it, I mean in terms of the, how it looks but it works really well I'm actually kind of you know at first I was like yeah that's weird and then I was like oh that works pretty nicely I kind of like that um, so yeah the action in terms of uh, flipping is good it doesn't quite fall shut it's gonna be more of a shake shut which is about what I expect on this price range we'll talk about that later um, the action is definitely smooth it's not like drop shut smooth um, it's just a little a, a little teeny tiny bit of friction in there, but like I said, it's very similar to action that I felt in a lot of other knives in this price range. I think it's important to remember that an absolute drop shut action, which is a lot of times, you know, what we see on budget knives, I'll use the uh, FH12 as an example, this knife falls shut. Does that mean it's, um, you know, better than this knife? No, that's just how it is. Um, but uh, that, that, that is something that you'll see. And I think for newcomers, it's important to point that out that just because you're not getting a drop shut action. I have knives that are well over $500 that don't have drop shut action. It's not necessarily a measure of quality. It's just something that you get sometimes and something that you don't get other times. This knife does run on bearings and it does feel nice. Um, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the anatomy of this knife. What we have here is it kind of looks, it's kind of like the Aurora. It kind of looks like a DLC coating. It's, it's uh, similar to uh, the coating that you see on a lot of less expensive knives. Um, very similar to what you see on the coated version of the Rat 1 and 2. Um, I think it's stronger than paint, though I know that it's not necessarily, if it is the same as what's on the Rat, it's not going to hold up forever. It's going to be decently durable, but I wouldn't expect it to be like Spyderco's uh, tungsten-based coating or anything like that. Looks nice, though. It's very uniform. Um, no issues there in terms of the execution of it or the quality look. If you're seeing any marks in there, it's really just fingerprints. Um, what we're looking at here in terms of a blade shape is kind of a cross between a sheep's foot and a Warncliffe. Uh, Warncliffe. It's actually a very, um, it's a fantastic shape in terms of a working blade. Um, you have a stock thickness here. Let me go ahead and turn on my calipers. Pretty thin, 120, probably about 125 thousandths there. Um, so not super thick. You have a flat that carries out 
about 75 to 80 percent yeah about 80 percent the length of the blade um, and it's going to maintain that thickness so it's not super thick but it's going to maintain it way down here so you have a lot of material down towards the tip excellent working blade in terms of the thickness versus other blades that are the same thickness like the um, Ritter Hogue here um, there's less material at the tip of the Ritter Hogue than there is um, on the uh, Cayman here so you probably have a I mean in, in terms of durability for that thickness it's probably going to be pretty durable uh, the, the edge is absolutely straight so it's not going to be ultra slicey but in terms of your draw cuts or your push cuts you know things like that it's going to work pretty well uh, think like oversized elongated box cutter really the whole knife has this look of tool you know that's honestly what it looks like to me it I mean yeah in a way it does kind of look like one of those pre-packaged folding cutter tools that you would see at Home Depot or something like that um, but and that's at first glance but when I pick it up you realize oh no it's actually a modern uh, flipper folding knife that's been executed well uh, in terms of overall fit and finish and quality materials for this price range you're seeing here vg10 which i think is perfectly acceptable in this price range nice chamfering all the way around we have a good execution of the cutting edge no wonkiness or anything like that looks really nice no nicks or rolls or anything very sharp right out of the box uh, nice no problems there whatsoever you have a nice sharpening choil here and plenty of a flat up here to clamp it if you need to resharpen it. I think the knife will be really easy to resharpen over time. No jimping, curiously up top, I would imagine a knife like this is definitely a knife that I would reach for to go do something outside real quick or do some sort of outdoor, you know, you know, outdoor oriented cutting task. So imagining on a construction site, this is the type of tool that I would reach for. So it's kind of curious why they didn't decide to include any uh, jimping up top because it's certainly grippy everywhere else. We'll talk about that here in a sec. This area right up here is an area you can definitely choke up on. Um, and I imagine it's like that given how they had to shape the flipper tab, but it seems like there's would have been room here to create more of a choil to kind of get rid of this and make just go ahead and make this whole area a choil. Not that big of a deal. I mean, you, you can choke up here. It's just not as comfortable as it would have been with a choil. Not that big of a deal. There is chamfering going on out here, but because we have these areas right here, these grooves cut all the way out to the outside, it, there is some sharpness on the um, uh, on both sides of these grooves either way. So you'll find your, your fingers catching all the way around here. Now, that can be viewed as an advantage or disadvantage. You know, this type of knife is, like I said, one that I would reach for on a job site. So having excess grippiness on this knife is definitely, um, you know, a good, uh, that's a, a, a positive attribute, you know, in that light. Uh, in terms of an office carry EDC, these scales are definitely scales that are going to shred your pants. That's just how it's going to be. So it depends on, you know, where you're going to carry this knife, what type of person you are and what your lifestyle is as far as whether or not you can view these types of scales in positive or negative light. Um, they did do a good job of knocking the outer edges down around, around here, but it's just this area that's very, very aggressively grippy. Um, we do have the uh, Yobo tool symbol there right in the middle of the pivot. Looks nice. It's got a black pivot color. I don't mind that. I've said this before. Orange is not my favorite color in the whole world, but they do offer different colors with this knife. By the way, if you decide you want to uh, own this knife for yourself after this review, there's an Amazon affiliate link in the description. You can use my link and help support my channel if you don't want to do that that's completely fine as well um, but uh, yeah you know you can choose different colors if you decide that this is for you thankfully there is a cutout to engage the liner lock I appreciate that so I mean it they're at least aware of it it makes it a little less excusable on the Aurora but that reviews over but I did point that out it was curious that the on the Aurora they decided to go with form over function and not create a cutout to engage that lock bar why is that important it's because as the lock bar wears over there's less and less and less room to engage it from the from the top down like pushing your finger in to move it over but this cutout right here allows you to engage it from the side which means no matter how far it wears over you'll always be able to engage it a problem that we have here because of where the flipper tab is positioned and where the detent ball is positioned is we have a double clutch that means if you keep your finger i just about cut myself on camera thank gosh my finger you see that that's where my fingernail caught it <laughs> that right there is why that's an issue because the, if the detent ball were, if it were past the detent ball right here, it would mean I could move my finger out of the way, shake it shut. But because you can't do that, you actually have to move your finger back, clear the detent ball, which actually, it, there's built up kinetic force right here. So if you push too hard, it ends up clicking close like that and you risk cutting your finger. It actually, my fingernail caught it, but a good setup, once you move that lock bar out of the way and move this here, 
By the time that flipper tab is interacting with your thumb, the blade is already past the detent ball, and then you can simply click it closed. That's not the case here. It's not quite past the detent ball, so you have to move your thumb out of the way, let it roll past the detent where the detent ball meets the tang. So now the detent ball is on the blade and then close it. Don't super like that. There's a lot of really nice knives out there that have that same type of double clutch. Even the ZT0562 has that problem a little bit. Um, it's something you have to keep in mind when you're messing around with this knife and you're manipulating the lock bar. Is it a deal? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Did you hear that stutter? God, what's wrong with me? Um, is it a deal breaker? No, it's not a deal breaker. It's kind of annoying and it's something you have to watch out for. We have T6 screws. I don't like that. I've said it a million times. Let's move to T8 universally on the body screws. I'm just trying to say it in every video so that I can get as many people mimicking it as possible and hopefully at least a small change is made over time. Um, though I don't I don't fully expect to do make that uh, happen all by myself. So if you guys agree with me, then feel free to echo it. Um, ergonomically, it, it kind of looks like a blocky, chunky design, and it is. It's, it's kind of blocky and chunky. It's not the blockiest and chunkiest thing out there though. Um, ergonomically, the lines are in the right place to fit your hand, but I'm very aware of these edges because of how sharp these lines are. This is a knife that I would um, feel more comfortable wearing gloves and using. You know, it's definitely one that's going to become a little bit uncomfortable if you're going to be making cuts over and over and over again. And the pocket clip is a little bit of a hot spot too, but we'll get to that. You have an interesting lanyard uh, loop back here that's just part of the G10 backspace here. It's interesting and it's different and I appreciate it for that. It's not necessarily in the way of anything kind of um it's cool looking and it's it's like i said it's not necessarily obtrusive it just sort of goes along with the design so i'm okay with that uh again another um thing that they did that is is similar to the uh aurora is the fit and finish on the backspacer is absolutely perfect uh, it's it's completely seamless they really fit that well uh, and we do by the way have liners coming out to the lips we forgot to weigh this again let's weigh it i'm sure you guys are like why did you i want to know how much it weighs it's got full liners so the liners by the way are not milled out. I'm sure you guys, let me see if we can get all the way in there. Yeah, no milling on the liners there. So full, full thickness liners, 5.22 ounces. I regularly carry knives that are about eight to eight and a half inches that are over five ounces. So that's not that big of a deal to me. You have quite a bit of cutting edge, but I'll tell you right now, I know that there are people out there like, ah, it's over, that's too heavy. I don't want to carry that. You know, I don't think five ounces is that bad. Um, I think overall the carry profile is a little bit blocky. That's going to have more to do with why some people might not want to carry this, um, but it's not bad. I want to emphasize that it's not bad. Um, so ergonomically, it's okay. There's some sharp edges. The pocket clip does create a little bit of a hot spot. Let's talk about the pocket clip here real quick. Pocket clip is good. I like it a lot better than the one on the Aurora. It's going to carry about right here. You have a pretty substantial, not in terms of you know, it's not necessarily a shallow carry, but there's a lot of material sticking out here. Part of the blade, the handle, there's a whole bunch of stuff sticking out. It's not that bad. This is an outdoor work tool. It's not really meant to be a low profile, ultra shadow tactical, you know, carry, not carry knife. This this reminds me of something that you would, you would carry on a job site that would be easy to spot if it were dropped in the grass or the dirt. Um, you know, any orange knife, I guess you could say that. But so I don't know how important the carry position is for this, but just for people who are worried about that, that's about how much is gonna be sticking out of your pocket. Not the worst I've ever seen, but still something to consider. The knife can, you know, go in and out of the pants pretty easily, but there's a lot of friction. Those scales and the, the position of the lines create an enormous amount of friction. Pocket clip, you know, profiles okay. This bill sticking up is definitely one that's going to catch on a lot of stuff, especially if you're using this knife in areas where I think it was designed to be used, which once again is going to be outside. So just be cognizant of that. These knives are not made in the United States. They're made in China. And while they do come with a warranty, getting a, getting the specific pocket clip replaced for this specific knife is going to be something you got to call in and you know probably make a warranty claim and then they send you one back out. It might take a little bit. Um, not that big of a deal. That's going to be any pretty much any budget knife out there. Uh, the rest of the knife on this side, you can or on this side, you can see is pretty much the exact same as the front, um, except that we have the adjustment side for the um, pivot, which is a, a T8 Torx bit. Um, that's great. Lockup is coming in at a solid uh, about 50%. This particular knife um, did come perfectly centered. I've been flipping it a lot. You can see there it's off center towards the adjustment side, which means a quick turn right here um, will bring it right back to center. Um, no worries there. In terms of lockup, it is absolutely solid up, down, left, and right. No problem there. I've said I said this about the Aurora. In terms of the fit and finish and like, and like how everything was put together, 
yeah, this is it, it is quality. I mean, you're using you're, we've got VG10. We don't have any sloppiness in the construction. I think elements of the design could be improved. Um, not, I mean, getting rid of these this texturing or just changing the texturing to be less aggressive. Um, maybe making the scales a little bit thinner. Um, this part right here is really the part that I, I would say needs the most change. Um, that double clutch is on the on the bad side, you know, in terms of knives that I've handled that have that same double clutch situation. Um, some change needs to be made so that where the flipper tab meets your thumb here, the detent ball is already well up on the blade and riding on it, so that it can uh, so that your thumb can be safely moved out of the way and you can kick it down without worrying about it sort of coming down quickly on your finger on an accidental disengagement. You can see there I'm having to move and then just sort of keep pressure on that liner lock to move the, keep moving the blade out of the way and then move my finger out of the way and then close it. I'm making it look easy, but it does take a little bit of practice. And as you saw on camera, you do run the risk of catching yourself a little bit. The other weird thing is, and I kind of understand, I mean, the blade does look narrow in comparison with the handle, but keep in mind, if it were taller, then you would have a blade that would stick up even higher as it was closed. In terms of how much space it takes up this way, it's really, I mean, an argument could be made that it's the same height in areas as the PM2, so I'm not gonna knock it for points there. And even in terms of thickness, it's really about the same thickness as the PM2. So other than weight, I don't think this knife is necessarily any harder to carry than the PM2. I will say this, I do like this knife more than the Aurora. This knife has the same sort of odd, unique, sort of trying to do something different look about it. Um, and I think that that is a lot of what the Yobo Tool, the maker at uh, Yobo Tool is trying to accomplish here, is to offer materials that people like, like G10 and steel liners and bearings and VG10 um, for a price that people um, can enjoy, you know, most people for the most part can enjoy um, in a style that is different than what we're seeing out there. What's the price in this guy? It's gonna be right around $55. Of course, in some places you might see it a little higher and in the future you might see a little bit lower. Um, it uh, just kind of depends, but that's roughly what you're looking at here. Like I said, I like this one better than the Aurora. I, de I don't think it's the very best knife out there for the money, but if you like how this looks and you go ahead and pull the trigger on it, are you gonna be satisfied with the way that it's built? Yes, it is put together well. It's just got a couple of little quirky features that I think um, can be Im improved. And uh, I think uh, I think that's something that um, Yobo Tool is is looking to. You know, I obviously it's not like they're just going to try and release four models and be done with it. I would imagine that uh, they're going to continue on and, and do different things, make different models, or you know, pop, hopefully make improvements to uh, some of their other models. But uh, in any case, this is an interesting design. I'll leave it at that. Um, like I said, if you would like to pick this up for yourself and you want to support my channel, you can use my Amazon affiliate link in the description. That's going to be pretty much it for this overview and review, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to take a look at my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then go ahead and subscribe, excuse me, click on this Metal Complex, Complex logo, oh my gosh, and subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody and have a great day.